Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and in this short series we'll be learning how to make the treasure chest, animate some coins falling down and maybe some other things. In this particular episode we're making the treasure chest and this is not for complete beginners, it's for those that have a bit more confidence with modelling but looking for things to practice with. So if you've done my beginners intro course and maybe the sea shack or the well then you'll be ready to take this one on. You can find links in the description and just check out my playlists on this channel. If that's not quite enough, then I would thoroughly recommend the CG Boost course. Links again in the description. And lastly, do comment below with any thoughts that you might have and additions you might like me to add. And you can get across to the Discord server and share your work there. So we'll start in the basic scene and we'll select the default cube, S to scale in the X, and just bring it out very slightly. Into edit mode. Now I want to mirror this in the X axis and the Y axis. The easiest way to do that is to press N on your keyboard across to edit and there's the auto mirror tool. Now if you haven't got this enabled you need to go to edit preferences add-ons type in auto and there's the auto mirror just make sure that's ticked. It's really useful because now we can go to that auto mirror tool and we want to mirror in the x-axis so I press auto mirror. Now if I go into edit mode you can see it's cut it in half and if I go across to my modifiers under the spanner or wrench you can see that it's Got a mirror modifier with the x-axis and clipping is enabled. I also want to mirror in the y so I'll go to the y-axis but I want to change the orientation to negative because that way it will be at the front here and I'll be able to edit it at the front. I can now press auto mirror and you can see it's cut it in half again so I only have to model one quarter. The only thing is I've got two mirrors. I'll delete one and that will obviously delete that mirror but if I go to my first one tick the Y as well. It's now one mirror with an X and Y on. Okay, so I want to create these indentations here and here. So I'll press Control R to do a loop cut, wheel up to do two, and double left click. I want to do one down here, and that can be in the middle, so double left click, and one down here. So Control R, and I'll move this across. So it's basically a square here, and then left click. I'll go to face mode with three, select this face, E to extrude and pull it inwards and select this face E to extrude and pull that inwards as well. Now to do the top it's a tiny bit tricky to get your head around. I think the easiest way is to select the top faces E to extrude up just a touch so you've got a few more vertices to play with. Then I'll take these two G to grab in the Z and move that up and then to edge mode select these two GG to edge slide so it will slide along my edge like that and we created the top. Now we need to create that sort of indentation in here. So if I select these three, I can extrude and scale. It does go inwards like this, but that's fine for the moment because then we can scale in the X and bring it back out. And it doesn't have to be precise, just there's fine. Now you can see we've got slight issues with the distance. And we can easily do this by I by pressing G, then Y and pull that in or G shift X and we can pull it in the Z axis at the same time as well. So we want roughly the same indentation as we've got here and here and I'll go to edge mode with two, select that edge there, G then Z and pull that down so it's fairly level. Again we can be fairly rough here because we're going to distort the shape later on. So I want to cut in here so that we've got a similar thing in here going on in here. This time I'm going to press K for the knife tool so K you get this green dot which will snap to edges and vertices. It highlights red when you get to a vertex and that's because ideally you want to be cutting on vertices. So I'll cut from here, across to here and across to there. And then when you're finished press enter. And I've got this cut. Yes, I've got a triangle there. Don't worry about it too much. If I go to face mode now, select this face and press E to extrude, I can pull that in. And we've got our very basic chest shape. I'm going to modify the shape now using the proportional edit. So I'll click on that and you need to just go around selecting edges or faces and pull them out to create a sort of stylized look. If you haven't used proportional edit before the circle will dictate how much of the surrounding topology will be affected and you can change the circle width by the middle mouse button. Just have a play and see how you get on, it will all make sense. If I want to select edge loops it's alt left click and I can scale the bottom ones in, getting a bit more like the shape that I want. So just pull your shape around until you're happy. I like to make it into a bit more of a ball. I 
And there we go. Now I want the top to overlap the base to give it a bit more character. I'll also want the top to be separate so I can lift the lid on the chest. So let's go into wireframe mode. Z on my keyboard, go across the wireframe. And now I can box select those top faces. I can then press P to separate by selection. Now that's one separate object. I need to go into object mode and then select that to go into edit mode with that new shape. Let's go back to solid mode with Z and then solid mode. And I'll isolate this object with forward slash on my numpad. You can go up to view and local view if you want to use that command without a numpad. Okay, so we need to select the bottom edges. So I'll alt click, select those, E to extrude and scale. Try not to overlap each other like this. So the vertices, we don't want hitting each other. So somewhere around there is good. And we can sort those vertices out by going to one, select them and GG to slide them along. I've still got proportional edit on, but when I press GG, the proportional edit doesn't take any effect. So somewhere around there, probably we want it similar size to the rest of them. Edge mode again, select those edges. I'll come out of proportional edit so we don't get confused. So just that tool up there, E to extrude and pull it up. So in the Z axis, somewhere around there. And I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to fill this in rather than trying to match up this shape to the other inside. So I'll select just this one, E to extrude in the Y and E to extrude in the Y again. And then I can select this edge and press F then F to fill those two in. And now we sort of grid filled. Okay, so that's the top of the chest. So this inside bit will be wooden. Let's press forward slash again to go to the base. I'll come out of edit mode, select the base and forward slash to go into isolation mode. Okay, so this needs a bit more editing. I'll go into edit mode and I'll delete these faces on the top here. I want to give a bit of thickness to the wood at the side here and make these solid. So let's go to edge mode with two, E to extrude and pull that out in the Y axis. So it's level roughly with this one. So I'll grab that in the Y again. And this one here, E to extrude and X, and then bring that into the center there. Now we can merge these two vertices by going to vertices with one, selecting these two, Alt M, merge at center. Now I need to fill in this. The easiest way as I see it is to go to top view with seven on my numpad, all the Cartesian coordinates over here, grab this vertex and press E to extrude. Now if I go to edge mode, I've got this one and this one. I can fill in with F, this one and this one with F and just select this one and press F and that will fill that last one in. I'll just line this one up. So G then Y and line that up and go to edge mode, select these two edges, E to extrude in the Z axis and just above the base. And you'd think you'd be able to press F now to fill, but you can't. You have to actually press one, go to vertex mode, E to extrude in the Y, pull that into the middle. And now we've got the face and it knows where we want to fill. So I can select these two and press F to fill. This makes my wood very chunky and there's not a lot of space for all my gold coins and gems. So I might edit this shape slightly again. I might make all this wooden and then this bit metal. We'll see what looks okay in the end. So if I come back out of isolation mode, we've got our chest in two halves and that's great. And we want the top half to overlap the bottom half very slightly. So if I click on the top half and scale it up a bit to somewhere around there, just so they're not completely tying up together. Okay, you might be happy with your shape now. Now there's one thing that I think would make it look a tiny bit better and that's putting a bevel on these very sharp edges around here. I'm going to join them back together for this. So I'll select both of them with shift left click and control J to join. Now here you might notice in the bottom right that I didn't press control, I'd only pressed J by accident, but I sort this out later. They still have all the insides, they're just overlapping at the moment, but we can easily animate it later. The reason I want to join them together is so that I can set the bevel as all one object and then just separate them afterwards. Also I can select the colors as all one object and again, separate them afterwards and they'll keep those properties. I find it's just a bit quicker, but you can keep them separate if you like. So into edit mode and I'll select the edges that I want to bevel. So into edge mode with two and select those edges. A quicker way to select edges is to control left click and it will find the shortest route from the last one selected. So control left click here. This one, control left click down here and here. This one up to the top here and these two. So I'm getting all the outside edges. This one 
I'll undo that because there was a short route there, so I'll come and do these individually. Okay, so we've got all these edges that we want to bevel. Now I can press Control B to bevel them, and I can get a rough idea of what that's going to look like, and that's great, but I'm going to undo that. Instead, I'm going to come up to Item and use the Mean Bevel Weight, and that's under Edges Data because we've got edges selected. So I'll put that up to 1, and now if I add a modifier, I'll just minimize the mirror for now, and add a bevel modifier. At first it bevels everything, but actually, for some reason, the Control J didn't work. That's fine because I can easily join them together now. So I'll go back to Object Mode, because you have to be in Object Mode to join. Select the top one first and the bottom one last, because that's got the bevel, so that's the one I want to copy, and Control J. So at the moment, all the edges are beveled. I'll go back to Edit Mode, and you can see that. I Also, with the ones that got selected, I need to up the mean bevel. So now they all turn blue, and in the bevel, I can change the limit method to weight. So it's the same as the mean bevel weight here. If I click on weight, it will only bevel the ones that have a mean bevel weight. Now it's a good idea to have a good look around and check there's no overlapping faces or anything like that. And it all looks like it's worked okay. You can change the offset here if you feel that's a bit thick and it will stop and won't go any further at one point. And that's the overlap I'm talking about. If you look at these ones here, I think, they want to sort of overlap each other. It may not be those ones, in fact, but somewhere around they're trying to overlap each other. In fact, probably down the base here. And we've got the clamp overlap on. So if I untick that, you can see it overlapping each other like that. So there's the offset. If I put the clamp overlap back on, it will only go to a certain distance and not beyond. And that's actually quite helpful. You can go in and edit some of these and give them less of a bevel weight and it'll have less influence of your bevel. But I'm happy with this, and I think it looks great. Back into object mode, and we've got our chest. Last thing to do is the lock on the front. So I'll Alt right click in the middle here, let's go to front view, Shift A to add mesh cube, scale it down a touch, it's a big chunky lock on the front there, scale it in the Y. I'll just quickly go into isolation mode, into edit mode, and delete the back face. So to face mode, delete the back face. So we won't be needing that, because it's going to overlap the other object. Back out of isolation mode, and let's start moving this into position. So I'll scale down the bottom a bit, G then Y, move it backwards until it intersects at the back there, grab the front edge, G then Y, move that out, and this one, G then Y, and move it backwards. I might put a loop cut around the middle, and then I can bring this section back, G then Y. So we're gonna have a lock around there. I think it needs a bit of a bevel as well. I'm just gonna do this manually this time. So select the edges that I think need a bevel. In fact, I can select all of them, and I just don't want to bevel this edge loop around here. So if I press Alt, Shift, left click of that, it can deselect it. Now I can press Control B and do my bevel. So somewhere around there looks good. And just tidy the shape up a bit. So I'm just edge sliding. I'm adding a bit of distortion, which I'll do to the chest as well in a second, just so it looks like it's got a bit more character and looks a bit more interesting. So it needs a keyhole. I find the easiest way to do that is go to front view, K for knife tool, and just draw in a lock. I haven't done too many points, and if you're worried about quads, you can easily select two of these and press J to join. So there's a funny triangle in here. It doesn't make too much difference, but we might want to select these two and press J to join, and these two and press J to join. And then we could actually go in and select these two and Control X will dissolve those edges. There's a slight anomaly here because these polygons are slightly different angles. It doesn't matter too much though because it's low poly. So we can select this face and this face in face mode, E to extrude and pull it back and just before it starts overlapping the other shape, and we'll shade that a darker color than this one in a moment. So the last thing to do with both the shapes is to go around giving it a bit of distortion. So I'll select on the chest, into edit mode, and with proportional edit on, one to go to vertex, and just move it about. But the problem is it's mirroring across the other side, and it's not really adding any character. So at this stage, this is a very destructive process, this, but we're going to apply the mirror and the bevel. So you have to make sure you're very happy with everything. And it's a good idea to save your work at this point. So into object mode, start with the top one, mirror first, apply, and bevel, apply. Back into edit mode, now we can select our edges and just create a bit of distortion. I 
Okay, so it's a bit more wibbly wobbly, which I think looks a bit more fun and certainly gives it more character. With the lock, I think it needs to come out a bit further away. So I'll select the front faces. I've got these two selected already. I'll go into face mode and press Control plus to get those ones as well. G then Y and move those outwards. I'll have to bring down my proportional edit or I could turn it off, of course. So about there, I can actually select these two now and press G then Y and move those backwards. I'll turn off my proportional edit though. G then Y, pull those backwards until it overlaps. So somewhere around there, that's probably a bit too far out actually. So let's undo that and smarten up a bit more. G then Y, probably about there. Not sure why I went that far out the first time. And there, that looks a bit better now. Very chunky lock. Last thing to do, and I'll click on the chest for this, into edit mode is to add some notches. So I'll click on this edge here. So edge mode with two, control B to bevel. And that creates a bevel like this. I'll use my wheel and that will create a cut down the middle. I'll zoom into this a touch and press one to go to vertex mode, GG to edge slide that into the other one and GG to edge slide that into the other one. Now I've got a dink in my chest. So put those randomly around the place. Try not to line them up to the other side though. That's why we need to apply the mirror. So again, into edge mode, select one of the edges and try and make sure it's on one of the actual edges of the object. Control B to bevel, into vertex mode, GG and edge slide those two. And we've got another dink there. And I've just checked and I hadn't actually got auto merge on. I thought I'd put that on earlier. So when you edge slide, GG, edge slide. And if I press G again, they've not actually merged together. But if I have auto merge on, and now I press G and GG to slide it to the other one, they are one vertex. So I'll need to select all, Alt M to merge by distance. And we've got five removed. That's probably the ones I pushed together earlier. And now they should start auto merging. So if I select this edge here and press Control B to bevel, back to vertex, GG, GG. Yep, they're merging. Don't forget the back side. And lastly, the lock, do the same. This one's a bit interesting because it was on a pole, so it's beveled in a strange way. So I'll have to take this one and I can actually snap it to the other one by turning snapping on up here and to vertex. And now if I select this, G, it will snap to the other one like this, and this one as well. I might snap this one to this one just to tidy it up a bit so we haven't got a strange triangle in here. I know we've got n-gons all over the place. You don't actually have to worry about those. Even when you export to a game engine, it will convert it all to triangles anyway. I'll turn snapping off and I'll move these in different directions so they're slightly off kilter. And it also gives the lock a bit more of an interesting cut up low poly feel. Okay, so that's the chest modeling. In the next episode, I'll talk a bit about the animation process and the gold coins, and let me know of anything else you need me to put in there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.